It's not art. <laughs> Benny, you know magic or something? Welcome back to everyone who watched me install that paver tee pad you see in the background. Today we're off to building the sitting wall. It's going to be a stone veneered sitting wall, and the style of the stone veneer is field stone mosaic. We'll be building it on a 4 inch concrete pad, which is what you see us preparing for now. The base for this footing is made of 3 quarter inch crushed clear granite. If you want to know more about how we prepared the base, check out the playlist link in the description below for all the videos from this project. Let's get into the day guys. What's up pal? Hey man, hey. Hey man, bud, what's up? Oh, you know, mixing. Mixing? As you've seen, we're not using any kind of fancy concrete, just a regular 80 pound bag of concrete mix that you can get from any home improvement store. We want to make sure our footing is about an inch below the top of our pavers so that it looks like the stone veneer is coming out of the ground. We don't want it flush with the pavers. Day number four. Man, he's making mortar. How are you living, brother? I'm living. It's starting to get warm. Yes, sir. Sun's coming out. Beautiful. Definitely the nicest tea pad in Massachusetts right now, Benny. Kidding? If you walk up to this thing, you probably wouldn't even know it's a tea pad until you start looking down. Oh yeah, there's a basket right there. <laughs> so if you are just joining me now on this project, this is a paver tee pad for a disc golf course here in Webster, Massachusetts. The course is called Webster Fishing Game. So the pad cured overnight, and here we are mapping out and laying out the first row of blocks. We're just trying to keep it four inches off the pavers to account for two inches of veneer and mortar and then a two inch gap just so it's not completely right up against the pavers. And we're just going to use our Type S mortar to create a nice little bed to lay our blocks on. And uh, you see that little gap in between the blocks. I will make a cut for that just to fill in. You don't want your cuts on the edges. You want to try to keep them in the middle if possible. This sitting wall is going to be roughly 7.5 feet wide. And um, if you're trying to do this yourself, you just really need to account for the measurements of the stone veneer thickness and the mortar. Typically, if you account for like an inch and a half to two inches for your veneer and mortar, you're going to be all set. So for your project, just make sure you do the math, double check, triple check your measurements. But you have to build your block work to account for your stone veneer. And you also have to build it to account for the overhang of the cap that you're going to install. So take your time, map the area out, and uh, double check all your measurements. Like I said, that's, that's number one. I, I did that with these blocks. I mapped it out on the footing before I laid them. And then if you lay them all in place dry the way I did and just do one at a time, it's a really good way to stay accurate as you set these blocks in mortar. So I have gotten a few comments on some other stone veneer projects where when I put the block work in I don't put mortar in between the blocks and it's simply because it's not necessary when you do stone veneer. When people do block work that's going to be visible 
the joints are for aesthetics. They're also to seal the, the joint in between the blocks so water doesn't get in. And it's also for measurements. Just like lumber, cinder blocks are designed to be a half inch short in every dimension. These blocks are 10 inch wide by 8 inch high and 16 inch long. But the actual measurement would be 9.5 wide, 7.5 high, and 15.5 wide. So when people are building structures out of blocks like this and the blocks are going to be visible, those mortar joints is going to account for the extra half inch needed. But for stone veneer applications, again, it's just not necessary because when we put the stone veneer on, it's going to seal up those joints in between the blocks anyway. So if you plan on doing a project like this on your own, don't worry about wasting your time trying to mortar the blocks in between. Just set them in nice and tight with each other and you'll save yourself a lot of time and aggravation. All right, we got our first row in, and now it's important, like I said, just stagger your joints. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly in half for a small application like this, but make sure they're at least a few inches staggered. Block work for our sitting wall is done. What's up, bud? <laughs> so those blocks are about seven and a half inches high plus mortar. So we're at 16 inches right here, and we have a three inch cap. Just gonna make it about 19 inches with about one inch buried. So like an 18 inch sitting wall is gonna be the height from the top of the cap to these pavers. Ben's making some bags of concrete over there, and we're gonna core fill all these blocks with concrete to make this a nice solid bench. If you guys are joining me right now with this video and you haven't seen anything prior, there's an entire playlist and the link in the description below of how we excavated this, installed the paver tee pad, and now we're on to this sitting wall. Got a batch, bud? Where's this going? Where? 
yeah, we're going to core fill the blocks. So I definitely recommend core filling the blocks. If you don't want to spend money or do the concrete, at least use some three-quarter inch clean crushed stone. Just gives the uh, blocks some extra strength. But I'm putting some, some loose stones I have around in there just to save a little bit of room. It really doesn't matter how you do it. Just uh, Just get those blocks filled up so they're nice and solid throughout. It's pretty important for when you go to put the cap on. If you don't use the concrete and you use three-quarter stone, it just means you have less surface area that the caps are going to be adhered to. So if you can concrete the, the cores of the blocks, that's the best way to go, in my opinion. Look at the snow. Sheesh. Look at this place, guys. It's beautiful right now. Morning, bud. Morning. Think anybody's gonna come play today? I don't know. I hope I see somebody. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's a very playable day. Some would call us crazy, bud. Yep. I'm one of them. I think we're crazy. But it's got to get done. Some way, somehow. It's not hard. <laughs> Benny, you know magic or something? Magnetic plastic. <laughs> it's a little cold. It's a little cold. <laughs> Good thing we don't need the, the trowels or the string today. <laughs> oh, man. We'll just let that sit for a little bit. It was certainly pretty cold that morning. But anyway, we're off to dry laying our first row. Any kind of stone veneer I do, I always dry lay a good portion of it before I think about doing any kind of mortaring to the surface. We're going for about half inch to three quarter inch uh, joint lines in between these stones. Gives you a little bit of wiggle room as you're building these. Sometimes I do stone veneer where the, the stones are tight on each other, but that just wasn't the design for this particular project. We're doing a mosaic style with field stone veneer, which is my personal f favorite type of stone veneer. It just ends up looking really natural, and it's hard to tell that it even is veneer when you're finished. But I guess for, for the tips on how to do this, guys, it's really stonework is just a meticulous kind of work you got to take your time you're going to end up cutting the same stone a few times a handful of times you, you cut it you put it there you see how it looks you remark it uh, in a spot where maybe you need to trim off a little bit more and um, each each stone is going to end up getting cut on every side don't waste so much time trying to find perfect stones Find a stone that's gonna that seems like it's gonna work pretty good, and and start trimming it to fit. Because if you waste time with finding a perfect stone, you're gonna realize that it just <laughs> isn't possible most of the time. They all need some customization. I try so hard, <laughs> can't seem to get away from misery. Come on, dude. Let's bust a freaking early 2000s R&B day, dude. <laughs> Throw some Akon up there. Akon and Young Jeezy. <laughs> dude, he fell off the map when he threw someone off the stage or hit him or something. What did he do, he bro? He did do that. He picked someone up and threw him off stage. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that, dude. Nope. <laughs> he's, high. he's got like... Paying thousands of dollars in security, and he goes and throws someone off stage know, right? and just Come ruins on. his entire career. <laughs> Come on. 
Oh, 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 that hurts me. So as you've seen in that last clip, after I cut the stone, I roughed the edges up with the brick hammer just to give it a nice natural textured look and not as much of a saw cut look. But like I said before, each one of these pieces needs work. They need to be cut and customized on every side. You might put a piece in that you think is, is all set and done, but then when you go to put another piece next to it, you're like, oh, I need to actually fix that a little bit. We're back. We went for a ride, got some more veneer from my house, got a few other things, some lunch. Benny, it's getting warmer, dude. It is, warmed up a lot. For sure. The sun's shining through now, bud. We're gonna stick those stone to those black. The mortar we are using is made by Ardex. This particular mortar is called X77. What the 77 is designed for is vertical applications for stone veneer. Uh, it's a Microtech, copyrighted I guess. Fiber reinforced tile and stone mortar. That 40 pound bag is about $50. It's very, very sticky. It holds on veneer way better than any Type S mortar, a regular mortar you can buy at the store. With that mortar over there, we just got some water. It is going to be below freezing tonight, so we're going to be putting an additive into the water that just helps prevent the water from freezing. And then we're going to be covering it with that thermal blanket over there overnight, so it will be just fine. Just a couple extra precautionary measures you got to take when you're doing stonework in the below freezing temperatures. So I got a little propane torch too. What I'm going to do is just hit the concrete block a little bit and hit the back of the veneer a little bit to melt any ice and just warm the surface up for putting the mortar on it over there. thanks man i'm gonna get whatever a little bit of dirt's on the back off Hard to see the flame in the day, but she's lit. Definitely warming it up. Definitely warm the surface up. So it's good to check your pieces where they're going to be sitting. Like this piece right here is thinner on this side than it is this side. So I need more mortar over here than over here. we're putting the stone veneer on we're not just trying to back butter it even on the back of the stone and stick it on because the thicknesses vary 
a lot, every stone. So you gotta really set it in place to where the face is really supposed to be. The thin ones you need a lot behind because it gives you the, brings it out forward to compensate for the very thick ones. We're leaving the gaps open for regular mortar to go into when we point it. That's gonna come after we finish all the veneer. We're gonna point all the joints with just a regular mortar. So put as much mortar as you need, compensate for the thin ones and the thick ones when necessary. You may need more or less depending on the stone, but make sure you keep the face of the veneer as even as possible and as plumb as possible. And when you got the stone in a good spot and you're all set, use some extra mortar and fill in the spaces and trowel it off nicely. Then you can use a sponge if you made a little bit of a mess to clean up the edges. This propane torch seemed to be working pretty good to warm the surface up, both on the stone and the block. Just enough for us to keep moving with this project during a cold day. I'm curious how many of you watching have actually done stone veneer, or if you're here to learn how to do a project your own. Let me know in the comment section below. Another cold morning here. Morning, Ben. Morning, Kyle. I'm starting off with that corner right there. See how many pulls this morning. It's like 28 degrees I think right now. So with stone veneer like this, a lot of times the edges kind of curl back really quickly and making it very thin. So I like to cut off all the really thin edges to make sure that the stone is at least a half inch to three quarters of an inch thick so that it doesn't chip off in the future.
careful right here, bud. She's what a wiggler. It? She's a wiggler. Don't mess with it. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I wanted to show you how we pour the footing, build the block work, and get the stone veneer going. The next video is going to be us finishing up the veneer. And when we finish up the veneer, we got to point all the joints. And then we also got to install the nice granite caps that we're going to be putting on the top. So if you're a new viewer and you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button for a lot of other content like this. And if you want to see how we got to where we are with the paver project and everything, like I said, there's a link in the description below. But as always, guys, God bless. Till the next one. Peace. <laughs>